So what I want us to do is to start becoming more conscious, start choosing things in a better way for ourselves, and start creating a life that's going to gear us to really take advantage of the opportunities that are going to show up for us in the, the years to come. This podcast is brought to you by The Integrated Human. We work up, down, inside out to plug yourself into your potential. If you want to see what we are up to and what's next, sign up to our newsletter or follow us on social media. If you like what we are doing, we really appreciate it if you can like our post on social media and YouTube and help us grow. Welcome to another edition of the Big and Small Podcast. I'm Jason Shields and I'm big. And I'm Marit Gabrielsen and I'm small. Yes, and today we have our good friend Rector Custers who is an elite level athlete in jiu-jitsu and we're here just to jam a little bit. Um, I wanted to talk about polarity, dynamism, energy, and integration. All the small topics in life. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> like, that's what we're bringing today. Good morning. Good, good morning. Good morning. Go bam. That's how we talk coffee. Now, we are, of course, all kind of striving to be comfortable and happy. That's a survival need. Uh, but it shows us over time, life, science, that people who can postpone gratification, say no to instant pleasure, suffer a little bit, get more, right? So no athlete can become world champion eating <laughs> chocolate donuts on this on the sofa while they're watching Netflix for years and years and then just pop up and, and win, right? I mean, that I don't think that's ever happened. A lot of things have happened that's never happened. So though you say you enjoy your training, you don't train because you enjoy it when you're going for the ultimate, you know, how many times do you guys go to training and you're just like, holy moly, Bob, this is going to be a hard one, right? But very often, those are the ones that give you the most. And you suck it up and you get through the darker times. And those darker times, those challenging times can be on the inside. They can be on the outside. You know, it kind of struck me a little bit because, you know, in the the 50s and 60s and 70s, you know, the, the generation of evolution revolution the beatles and maharishi and mahesh yogi and tm and hippies and you know sit-ins and all this stuff and people trying to disassociate themselves from society because society become so locked up and so in a way chained to a certain way of being where people were suffering but nobody showed it you know you know Mama's Little Helper, Valium. You know, when housewives were taking Valium because they weren't living their lives, they weren't living their dreams. It was suffering, right? But at the same time, everything was perfect. Everybody's lawn was mowed, and you know. That, but now it's Instagram pitch perfect. Yeah, mm. exactly. Ah, ah, mm. ah. Very, very oh, keen up. I think we talked about my uh, my uh, issue with the uh, Instagram coffee cup before. So yeah. Well, we, we, we need to come back to that because it's, it's a good reminder, you know, that needs to be brought up several times, you know, and then, and then you have these great thinkers that come out of this time, you know, the hippies who were, you know, breaking out, breaking loose. And you have Timothy Leary who created LSD. Not that I'm saying that you should do drugs, kids don't do drugs, but you had a lot of people who were trying to break that box with, you know, industrial strength chemicals. <laughs> and they were trying to take a step to the side. Some people went to India to meditate. Other people took drugs, you know. And Alan Watts, who was a great philosopher and Buddhist, Western Buddhist that brought back a lot of philosophy of Hinduism and Eastern religions and cultures, you know, they sat down and they had this amazing kind of debate-ish. It really wasn't a debate. They were all becoming very clear on the fact that things had to change, right? Because this whole model of civilization, this whole model of being wasn't wasn't working for people. People were freaking out. And though they were looking right, people weren't evolving. So they came to the conclusion that the hippies should start making their own communities. You know, drop, what was it that, you know, you you tune in, 
you uh, sit down and you drop out. And dropping out was like dropping out of society and creating your own currencies and all this stuff. The issue with that, of course, is that it is one pole. It's total, in a way, not anarchy in a violent way, but it's complete disassociation from society as it is now. And a lot of people are like, oh, we have to make a change. We have to just scrap everything. But, you know, let's say that you have your own currency. How are you going to run a hospital? How are you going to de develop technology for recycling if everybody's just going to be, you know, cutting spoons and bowls out of trees and living, you know, in harmony with, with nature, right? So it's not about scrapping the old. It's about integrating new values with what we have from the past, new values in that structure. It's integration, you know, this, this, this whole idea is that <clears throat> you have, for example, racism, racism. Oh my God, that's horrible. And anti-racism, but anti-racism strengthens racists. You attack the racists, the racists arm themselves more, goes to the next level, and then the anti-racists, they're, they're arming themselves, and then suddenly it's chaos. Integrating it, realizing that people are allowed to be individuals and that it's absolutely positively just not acceptable anymore to have racism. You have to integrate it, absorb that, not in a way counter it. But at the same time, in order to find that other pole, you have to counter it, right? So you have to understand that <clears throat> the work the hippies were doing, the work that Alan Watts and, and uh, Timothy Leary and all these guys were doing, that was necessary in order to create that polarity. So you will see as things evolve that you have polarity in your life, and it's very important. So, you know, Marit and I were talking a little bit about some of her processes, and not all of them are light and fluffy. Guys, there's not just a whole bunch of pink bunnies running around. Sometimes it's dark and there's dragons oh, I miss in the those corner. Pink bunnies. Yeah, the pink bunnies. Right? <laughs> yeah. I think you guys miss the pink bunnies as well sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Red gets smiling very big over yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no comment. No comment. It's, 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 I think that's the thing people forget it's not always pink bunnies but the important part is that you're there anyways if you only dare when there's pink bunnies then are you really a friend are you really caring for this person or is it the whole i'm not getting what i want so i'm out of here exactly so it's it's of course it's more pleasant with pink bunnies but it's going to be so much better in the end uh having dealt with all the other stuff on top of the pink bunnies. So you can have all of it. <laughs> that's <laughs> everything. Let's get dropping wisdom. That's it. You're throwing things right back into my face, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> really fun. <laughs> yeah. No. I don't I don't get the chance to do that often. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but it's true. Now you have to have... Um, I think you get a richer life if you have both sides you do yeah absolutely and you become more powerful because again you know it's great to have a, a whole separate community where everybody is just living free and wild and and living living life in nature but then when somebody gets sick what do you do yeah, it doesn't work because you can't always be happy well that's it. at that, the same time you, you see, can't always be sad so this, this is it you have to have both sides and the middle. And now we get back to another interesting point, suffering. Why do we have the suffering? You have suffering because our biological and psychological need to avoid discomfort and to find a place of happiness and joy drives us to find the pole, the, 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 the opposite polarity, doesn't it? So people weren't happy with what was going on in the 60s and 70s. So what do they do? They're, you know, they're sitting in and they're dropping out. They're trying to disassociate themselves from that. And then we find the pole. And then they realize that, okay, that, that model doesn't work either. So we have to integrate. And that's the process of integration. It's a process of awakening. And that's something that's so important. Because, you know, do what you do, but do it with awareness. But that awareness comes from having to discover each piece of it. So in your life, if you're going through some shit, excuse the language, but that's right. Sometimes it feels like shit. Guess what? 
You're becoming aware. Now, unless you are refusing to look at it. Have we ever refused to look at something that sucks? Oh, big time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I refuse until it comes. I have the time that I refuse to look at it. I, ref- I refuse until it's so big that I cannot not look at it anymore. Mm. And mm. then it's always, right. Then I always ask myself the questions. I I know I have limited time. Mm. You guys always make fun of me because I'm always in a hurry because I'm, nothing is going fast enough. Yes. Right. And then I ask myself then the question, am I willing to sacrifice an hour, a day, a week, a month, a year, more, because not I because I don't want to look at this thing, or is it time to just look look at it? Because it's now it's stopping me from making progress. Because before that it's been been there, but I've still been able to make progress and evolve and do my stuff. But then at, at one certain point, it's in your face, and if I'm not looking at it, I would stop my ev- stop to evolve. I would not get further. Mm. So then the question is, how much time am I willing to sacrifice? And then the question, obviously, I'm not willing to sacrifice any time. Mm. So then we take a big, big breath in, and I go, okay, guys, I have an issue. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Mm. <laughs> Sorry, the language, but mm. it is a, what the fuck is this thing? It's in my face. Mm. I have to get past it. Let's go, not over it, but again, through it. Through it. That's it. And then you guys also usually know what I'm working with, so it helps to have then a peer group and a bunch of friends that also know where you are Mm. so they kind of know what button to push and not to push and then we go through it yeah but i think herke knows that not always that easy to to look at it and it's Mm. very easy to to escape it or try to escape it yeah escapism is is probably the the game that keeps us from progressing the most Mm. right and again that's part of the whole process of evolution because it's escapism is the the opposite pole of engaging right so you you know you learn that okay this is where i'm escaping and i have to look at it but before you can look at it in a way you're usually generally escaping because you can't take on everything at once right you really can't so you have to take on pieces so you will always be escaping from some small things in your life sometimes big things and you know, whether that escapes, escapism is something that's healthy or not healthy, you know, it's definitely not keeping you on the track of your own personal evolution. But again, it's it's a mechanism that is necessary very often for us to be able to cope, right? How would you um, distinguish escapism in a good way and a bad way? Because, of course, nothing is just bad and mm. nothing is just good. Mm. So like you said, there is moments where escapism keeps you from going off the edge. But Mm. is is there a way that you can distinguish the two? Yes, it's it's a that's a a, an interesting question because because escapism is there to dose how much you're having to deal with. Um, Humans are stressed most by change. You know, the, the bad situation that you have that you know is often much more comfortable than a possible good situation if you have to change something, right? So people would rather stay the same often in a shitty situation rather than take a step forward because of this mechanism. But if you take small pieces at a time, you know, uh, Lao Tse, I think he said, how do you eat an elephant one one bite at a time, right? So it's taking one piece at a time. And escapism, in a, in a way, is a, a way that your psychology, spirit, and body portion out the change so that you can deal. One mechanism that I've seen, I had a friend who was, the guy's like a super achiever, right? But as many super achievers, he's very polar inside he's he has lots of energy and he has lots of drive and he has very little patience for people who are not progressing right so when he would get home his life home situation wasn't very good his partner was out of balance and in also a fantastic human being but out of balance in a completely different way and it drove him crazy so when he was little jacked up with energy and he had too much going on 
he would just throw himself into work because he couldn't deal with confronting his partner with what was going on, which is, of course, his emotional state, right? He couldn't deal with the whole emotional connection thing. So he threw himself into work because if he had at that point thrown himself into his work, he would have had to rework his whole emotional body, which for a period, if you've ever done some work on your emotional body, can throw your achievements structure off a little bit. And he didn't really feel that he could afford to break down his whole business and, and all the things that he was doing at that time. So, you know, in a way he was escaping to work. It was something that was in a way beneficial because he was building value in his life. So that kind of escapism, you can say, would be superior than drinking alcohol or something, though drinking alcohol is not always an escapism, right? As we talked about in one of our pod podcasts before. Um, he found that, okay, I'm not ready at this point to take this. I, my, my, my life, I'm not ready. But a few le a few years later, he was well, he was ready for that mo that moment, right? And it turned out that he grew and and he now is even more successful than he ever has been. You know, we're talking hundreds and and millions of of crowns worth of income every year, which people don't really understand how much money that really is. That's a lot of money, and if you measure success in that direction, he's very successful, and now he's very successful on the inside because he's found. A deeper level of love and he's he's ready and he's still he's still evolving right but you know you find something that you like and you don't want to risk it and uh, very often it's easy to use escapism to avoid it so good escapism was it good for him to to do that yeah because he didn't dissolve his whole life you can you know people are dependent on him he has employees and all that but on the other side of it you know when is the best time for you to evolve right now mm. right you should be evolving somewhere in your life all the time because this is this is life guys this is it so so get the most out of it you can right yeah. and wherever you are you are there you are exactly so if you evolve yourself then your life will by definition evolve i think it's uh it's different also because i think many people escape into something without knowing they are escaping it exactly i think that's the first issue because uh we had this conversation last summer because we spent a lot of time together last summer <laughs> <laughs> and COVID happened and we were shut down and we were just sitting together. So we had to talk. We had, well, we did talk a lot. And cohorts. We were cohorts, guys. We, we're are, big, we yeah. are one cohort. We are a big family here. Yeah. And then um, we're talking and, and uh, Eirik, my husband, he, he all of a sudden saw that he's been using video gaming as escapism. And that shocked him. And he's been playing video games for... He's 29 now, so he's been playing since he was 10. And he hadn't understood... Because it, it went from something that was fun to do with friends to something he dived into when he didn't want to deal with something or he was stressed or it was something else going on that... So he was... Instead of dealing with that stress and say you have accounting, mm. you should do. So instead of dealing with his accounting that he has to deal with no matter what. And if he doesn't deal with it, it actually is just getting bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger. And, and all of a sudden, money, it's, mm. it's a nightmare. all of a sudden you have your wife and government on you because mm -hmm. you're not <laughs> doing your accounting. So that is not, you should deal with it. Mm. But instead of dealing with that, you play video games for four hours. Because when you do something you like, you just, time goes by and, oh, uh, now I'm too tired to deal with accounting. Mm. You know? Um, and that shocked him. Mm. But so now he's trying to find a balance between doing what he likes is like it's video gaming for him to relax and have fun because you still love to do it. Mm. I, I think that's very important. Although you, it's find a balance to use it to relax and use it to escape is two different things. Mm -hmm. So he's, of course, allowed to use it as something to relax with. Yes, and to have fun and chat with his buddies and mm. and play tac. No, he doesn't play tactical. That's you, yeah. Jason. Uh, he <laughs> plays uh, what's the game? Call of Duty. Yeah. Could could card card yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> it's a fish, anyways. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I'm into it. Mm. Uh, he play Call of Duty 
with his buddies and talking online and all that, and then escaping into it because he doesn't want to deal with what is actually stressing him out. Him out if that being, I'm doing something that he doesn't like. Or if that's his accounting, or if it's something else, mm. you should deal with that first, and then because then it actually can use his video gaming to relax and have yeah, fun with, exactly. instead of just pushing it and pushing it mm. and pushing it. Mm. So I think a lot of people use something to escape into, mm. but doesn't realize, and that could be video gaming, could be alcohol, could be could be uh, work, and like we talked about before, that was when we were just sitting around and not having having microphones, but we talked about. Not doing something is also escapism. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Could be. Mm. Could be. Mm. Not always, of course, but could could be uh, an escapism that way as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, that not doing something, I, I remember at one point uh, we were going to have a um, a celebration drink after Worlds. And I think you didn't want to have that drink. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, true. And in a way it was in in some way it was an escapism from emotional contact at that moment would you have had that drink now yeah yeah but right just yeah. so that is clear for people you like to have a glass of wine with friends yes you don't yes. like ha- like to have a bottle of wine necessarily no, but, but a, a glass, glass of wine, wine yeah. you you it's enjoy you're elite level athlete you don't drink too much because that screws up your your chances right yeah. but a glass of wine here or there is not an issue exactly yeah mm. no i remember that I was uh, very, very, looking back at it now, I, I'm super happy with my fight, even though I lost. Mm. Uh, I fought one of the, I, no, I didn't fight one of them. I fought the best guy in the world at the time. Like, he, he won the category without losing a point, and then he swept the open weight, uh, won everything. Yeah, uh, it just and just so, if you don't do jujitsu and you don't compete, which is a lot of our, our listeners don't, um, Understanding that jujitsu has first weight categories, and then after everything's finished, then you can participate in the open weight, which means that people of all shapes and sizes can meet uh, in their categories and their belt categories. And Rucker was meeting a guy who basically had won all the tournaments, all of his weight and the open weights on all of them. It's like the Grand Slam. Yeah. You are meeting the Muniz brother. Yeah. Yes. One of yes. them is three. So yes. yeah, the three of no them, the, the, the youngest one, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Basically, this guy is an insane talent. He's an insane physical talent. He's an insane jujitsu talent in general. And uh, Rucker basically pulls him the first fight of the worlds, man. And 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 I love I love that fight. Mm, yeah. So so I'm actually proud with the loss, which is conflicting to to start with because. I um I want to win. I'm I'm not there to feel proud about my losses, but I did. Uh, and then it was like a long day and emotionally just wrecked. So by the time we were sitting down and having eaten good food and having had a good time with the rest of the guys, and uh, it was time to have our celebration drink. I was I was so out of it that I. And this drink we've been talking yeah, about for exactly. three months. I actually bought we, special yeah. mugs. I had them imported. The yes. whole the whole thing because for just this, is this the one whole drink. Clusterfuck in it is that we've been training for this for mm. we've been having this as a goal forever. But like for half a year, you you sacrificed everything and you're doing this. You you didn't go to confirmation. You didn't go to family. <laughs> your, your family doesn't even live in Norway. You didn't mm. see them for a uh, half a year because you were doing this thing. And we'll be talking about, you know, afterwards we're gonna we're gonna do Valhalla as we mm. say, because we're from mm. Norway. And we well, I'm from Norway, you guys live here. Uh, yeah. we're gonna <laughs> do Valhalla, we're gonna have a good meal, have mm. a good glass of wine, enjoy and, and you know, it's all about the process, because it's a process in the work that actually are the the most important thing. Mm. And R- we had grinding, competing, celebration. Grinding, competing, celebration. Yep. That's the cycle. And then we mm. had Jason had bought this ridiculous <laughs> ridiculously <laughs> big skull cups <laughs> giant are, skull cups they I mean, are yes oh they ha- it's like a it's like a skull with a viking helmet on it and mm. it has horn on the side yeah and you have to kind of well i'm tiny so i have to have two hands on one every side of that cup to drink it and it's not to drink it's a stupid as cup but for we had kind of built up this is what we're gonna do 
And I even lost my granddad mm. yeah. when we were over there. Yeah. But we have had that. And I was like, no, because this is bigger than me. It's me celebrating with my friends. It's, it's the team. I even lost mm. uh, lost my second fight. It wasn't a great tournament for me, but we had sat down. We're going to do this thing. We're going to have this celebration because this is bigger than me. This is the team. We did it. Mm. And then you were just, I was like, we're having some wine. And we didn't even say you have to have wine no, in exactly. it. You're just drinking off the cup. If you have juice in it or iced mm. tea, I don't care. Please drink from it. And you were sitting there just like, I don't want to. <laughs> and then Jason was just like, you have her. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. But again, that was a, in a way, it was a kind of uh, an escapism mm. from the ritual around it because mm. you weren't feeling it at that time. You oh. weren't feeling that emotional connection. And, and we're actually, like most men, having lots of emotion but not necessarily feeling it. Yes. And things happen and you don't, later on you go, wow, maybe we could have just had a drink for my friends. It was not mm. that big of a deal. And then we could have kind of sealed that ritual. Yeah. But that it just wasn't happening, right? Mm. Yeah. And it's interesting as well because it's what you perceive to be true and what's actually true. Because mm. I didn't want to escape by drinking, but I was actually doing the opposite. I would not have escaped. I would have accepted. But that's one of the, the issues that I'm still having is accepting that things sometimes go wrong. Yeah, You can't you can be perfect all the time. So, so mm. to... At that at that point, to accept the fact that I did good, but I still lost, and that Mata did good, but still lost, and that you were there supporting us, coaching us, and you did a good job, and and like uh, my best, mm. I to this day I still feel that's my best fight. Yeah, definitely. Uh, oh well, just put it this way. You know, the look on his face when you took him down. <laughs> it was like, what just happened to me? Like this guy was wrecking everybody submitting everybody and not only did rucker do a great job didn't get submitted but he also took the guy down and there was a moment where he was actually winning that fight and that is a position that he, that guy had not been in in over two years so rucker really he was an amazing fight. i love that fight mm. yeah but to be able to accept that and and realize that it's okay yeah. like we 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 take this and we put it to good use. And mm. when we're back on the mat in in a week, we work. Yeah, that's which it. Which is which is what we always do. Exactly. Um, but I think I'm hard on myself. So even like even though I did really good, <laughs> like really good, mm. I I couldn't accept it. And I was like, no, nah, I have to I have to do more. But that's I feel that's for a lot of competitors because I I can't remember the amount of times after competition. Mm -hmm. I'm like Jason, Jason. Should I train more? Like, I feel like I need to train more. You're like, no, you lift and you train a lot. So, no, you're you're doing good. Just just keep being consistent. That's that's like the f the first couple years, mm -hmm. and now the last last uh, years, you're like, is it really your training that needs improvement? Mm -hmm. Are you not as fit as as fast as strong as the number one guys? Like. Maybe there's something else you should be looking at. Mm, mm. Uh, so we've been we've been going at the mental emotional aspect, mm. and I'm I'm thrilled to compete again because yeah. the the physical uh, evolution has not been insane, but my mental emotional state, even though there's still a lot to do, mm. it's it's so much better. Yeah, I'm 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 looking forward to. Once again, stepping on the mat, and this time, it's not just my physical body that's ready. Because I want to have a mind that re that's ready, a heart that's open, mm -hmm. and a body that's good to go. Mm -hmm. And the the body is is the easy part mm -hmm. for me because mm -hmm. training that's you do that. That's mm -hmm. that's not an issue. You just oh, it hurts. Oh, just keep going. It mm -hmm. probably probably will go over at one point and if it keeps hurting for a long time then then we'll talk to someone and see mm. see what's going on mm. um but the mental mental emotional aspect and i think that's what a lot of people are uh missing mm. and don't don't realize it it's not focused on yeah. as much yeah mm. it's 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 kind of it's a little it's taboo yeah and especially emotions yeah mm. I, I remember i'm still uh, it's a podcast need to have about trauma 
Mm-hmm. But like I, I have used two years now to break down one wall because one guy told me that I had to stop being so emotional in the army. Mm. So and I got a letter saying uh, that the um, student uh, Tusedal, that was my name, then is uh, having emotional difficulties. And the reason being, uh, he asked me, actually, so how are you doing? And I cried a little because I was so tired. Mm. I was actually taught that he asked me how I was doing. Yeah. Well, this actually then, he was a young guy, 24 years old. They couldn't deal with emotions. So mm. then, because he couldn't deal with his emotions, I became emotional unstable. <laughs> Yeah, in like, his eyes. In, in his, his eyes. eyes. Yeah. And and that. But what did I tell you about when you eyes say, my superpower? Yeah, and is it? Yeah. It's, yeah uh, well, right now I'm not that fond of them, but they are very strong. So yeah, I'm very looking powerful. forward to to use them. Yeah. Because now I'm also looking forward to compete, but I'm not looking for the gold medal anymore. Mm. I I would like to compete. I love jujitsu and I will continue to do it. But you know, a gold medal or not, that's not the important thing anymore. But I would love to compete. And win the world championship because I would l- I really want to have the experience of being integrated mm. and ready to yeah. go four or five fights in a row at that specific day at that time that day and not just run your game and just yes. be be present because mm. the body and technique is I never I never lost on technique I've always fucked up mm. and that mm. being mm. stopping believing myself thinking I was finished. Distracted, thinking about being satisfied, being satisfied, mm-hmm. thinking about going to happen, oh, get happen a afterwards. Now I can relax. Yes. You know, and I you think know, people like, do that in work yes. and in everything mm-hmm. else in their life because they kind of you get to something uncomfortable and you use track, you you get distracted, you escape into a thought that mm. well, this is good enough mm. or yeah. whatever it is. Mm. So it doesn't have to, of course, be competition, but it happened everywhere in life, and then you escape into a dream, an idea, or whatever it is, and then. Mm that opportunity disappear oh. and then you have to wait a mm. month a year forever for that to come up again mm. that's it that's exactly it that's very interesting you know this is this is uh this is a important topic and and interesting themes you know you will have polarity in your life you're gonna have challenges that that make you either pull away escape or you choose that time to stay in it and figure out what's actually going on with you um, your achievement in life is going to be based on who you are because who you are determines how well what you do works. That's it. Because you are the common factor in everything you're doing. You may be doing, doing 100 things in a day, but you're there the whole time, right? So that inner work and being able to change your perception, your your idea, your highest goals and values with that supercharged heart filled with love and passion for what you're doing and combine that with a body that's able to respond. That, my friends, is the key. That is the integrated human. That is what we're all working towards. This is the next level of achievement. This is the true champions, not mindset, beingness, integration. That's what we're working for. Now, you know, how far you're going to go in your life will depend on when you're satisfied. Are you satisfied, you know, with being a multimillionaire? Are you satisfied having a partner or do you want a partner and three kids? Or do you want the next level of Tesla or whatever things you want? But over time, people, when they start achieving these things, realize that they become the person that can have them. Therefore, they have them. That sounds a little esoteric, but, you know, people in the alternative uh, environments talk all about this all the time, about how... Oh, you just have to want something, the secret, you know, if you get the book, the secret or watch the movie, you know, you just want it real bad, you know, and you, I want that Mercedes and it shows up. Well, in reality, if you want it really bad, then you become that person, do those things that then create that literally. And then it's there. The problem is for most people that it seems like magic or something esoteric because they don't actually know what they can achieve. They don't know that they can be that world champion. They don't know that they can create a situation where they can get the Mercedes, right? Now, once you have the Mercedes, how long are you happy with it? Oh, that doesn't matter because the Mercedes is not the thing. That's it. It's not the the thing. It's an excuse for you to develop and explore yourself. So when you realize it's not about that, 
That's but when people often get lost. That's mm. it. That's it. That's and they it. start doing random stuff and take <laughs> all kinds of medication. Yes. Because that's that's the thing. Like I'm, we talked about earlier in some of the podcasts that I'm in a have been. Um, I have no clue where I'm gonna be when we post this podcast, but I have been in a in a place with not a lot of joy. It's been a lot of mm. sadness, depression, and now it's a lot of anger. Um, Frustration. Frustration. But the thing is, and Eirik, uh, he asked me, but yeah, perhaps we need to go away. And you asked me, you need to relax. You have to go. I'm like, it doesn't matter if I go away. I'm still there. Mm -hmm. So if I go to the Bahamas, the, the worst thing I can do now is to go to the Bahamas. Or first of all, I can't. COVID. But second, if I did it, it wouldn't matter. Because I would still be angry. Mm. And then I would be even more angry because I know I was wasting. I'm conscious enough to know that I'm not wasting a good time in the Bahamas because <laughs> I'm angry. I'm not angry mm. at anyone because yeah. I'm not projecting it, but I'm still me. Mm. So if I have a Mercedes, I, I even got a, a lot, my dream lot. We're going to build my dream house. And I'm super happy about it. Mm. But I'm fucking, sorry, bad word. Still very angry. And it's nothing to do with a lot. And I have a very good life. I have beautiful friends. I have a great, I love what I do. I love what I do. I work a lot, but I love working. Mm. Mm. Doesn't matter because I'm still me. Mm. So even if you get the Mercedes, it's not going to change it. <laughs> exactly. Mm. It's not going to change it. Because you, you are who you, you are. And the yeah. state you have is the state, the state you have. Yeah. So what we've been working on and you've been like J Jason saying this ma this mantra almost was like you're not your thoughts, you're mm. not your body, you're not your emotions. So that helps me in the way that I can still have although I'm having big anger, frustration right now, I can still I'm still happy somewhere about mm. that. I know I have achieved what I wanted, which mm. right now was that lot. Mm -hmm. So I can build my house. But mm -hmm. You know, you st if you think the Mercedes is going to change the way you feel, it won't. And if it does, mm -hmm. it does it for three months. Mm -hmm. The car is a new car for three months, and then mm -hmm. you have a, your dog in it, and or your kid puking it, or someone scrapes it with a with a car key. Like, or even if nothing happens to it, you realize it's just a car. It gets and dirty. And then your focus is not on the car, but it's y you transporting yourself. Yeah. To where you need to go, and then you see someone else and with a big, bigger car, yeah. a better new car, Tesla, a newer, even newer. Oh, they have, oh, Ooh, shiny things, shiny things, right? You no, know, and then you have to have that because then I will be happy. Yeah. You know, you're searching for that happiness all the time. Exactly, and and we know why that is now when we you know become aware of that whole dynamic. You know, the whole searching for happiness and comfort and avoiding suffering is is basically the mechanism of evolution. That's why we have technology, for example. That's, you know, very interesting. But there's an old ancient Chinese curse that I thought was very interesting. May you be born in exciting times. May you be born in exciting times. Because when things are exciting, do you look inward? No. No. no, exactly. And the whole point is, is that your suffering, your lack of joy, happiness, understanding, development, evolution is basically dependent on you looking inside and working with yourself like Maudet's doing. And how brave is she to confront those emotions? How many big, strong men with tattoos on their neck <laughs> and big beards and Hell's Angels jackets actually need to sit down and look inside a little bit and get a hug from somebody so that they can feel safe enough to look inside their hearts and confront their sadness, depression, lack of value and all that stuff. Because do, do they have the opposite as well? Of course. Absolutely. It's not like, oh, you are a sad person or you are a happy person. You have all those things inside you. And if you don't learn to deal with them, my friends, if you don't learn to sit with them and understand them, Number one, you can't understand anybody else. And number two, you're going to be a victim every time they show up. And you're probably going to try to do something on the outside to distract yourself. And what did we say that was? Escapism. 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 Yeah, right? <laughs> Everyone's going to sit at night and I'm going to hear like, escapism. escapism. Next time Eric sits down to play a video game. Escapism. 
I think he feels that way already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. And that's probably because uh, Bart is sitting b- beside him yes. going, it's good business. <laughs> and I think that's one of the beautiful things I've seen mm. over the year because we haven't been training like we usually do. We ha- Life has changed and I will say for me, it's, it's been for the better. Yeah. Uh, it is absolutely much more richer now. Mm. Um, and you've seen... Z- I hang out with a lot of guys. Like my peer group is me and a bunch of dudes, uh, a t- small bunch of dudes. Um, Not many dudes, but big dudes. Big dudes, and to have C and Jason is of course very, uh, how to say, it, developed, integrated. <laughs> I've done a lot of self work. Yes, um, I've, I've suffered a lot. <laughs> you still suffer a lot. <laughs> and then we have the uh, young pal ones like uh, yeah, Rutger yes. and. and, and, and uh, Eric and, uh, and Ronnie, uh, one of our other friends, um, there's been kind of, because st- now we actually had time to sit down because we couldn't escape into training anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Why do you can use training as Yeah, life yeah. was less exciting. Life what? is less exciting. And we, c- right. we couldn't train. <laughs> you can't, you can't, although you, before COVID, you trained 20 hours a week and mm. now we do far from that. <laughs> but but the first thing we do when COVID started was that we we started to I started to go out in the forest, move more, and then at one point it said stop, and it did for all of us because we are a peer group and we we're together, so it's we develop together as well, right? And then all of us had time to sit more and think more, and to see the for me as a as a woman having a lot of emotions. First of all, starting to understand them and love that I have them, and to see. Uh, the development in the guys starting to understand how much they feel yet I don't know because mm. when we have at least when I have conversations with my husband it's always kind of starting to see it but not feeling them but I feel the understanding they have towards me is much bigger mm. and I appreciate them very much for not judging anything mm-hmm. And being very open with the processes I have had, although they've been emotional processes more than mental processes the last year. Mm. So big applause to you guys. Yeah. Uh, such a joy to be in, in your lives. Mm-hmm. I am so honored and I love you guys so much. And I just uh, am constantly amazed at the bravery and the speed of the evolution and movement forward i'm constantly impressed by the quality of human beings you are i'm just uh, overwhelmed and if i was going to be locked in a covid cohorts mm. with anybody i wouldn't want to change my group at all it's amazing i miss a lot of beautiful people but when we have to limit ourselves very 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 strongly what i have around me is it's it's gold so wonderful absolutely wonderful so, well, um, another thing that's important in technology and with the instantaneous access to information is really taking the time to integrate information, to feel it, and to work with things. You know, we have recognition recognition based consciousness today oh yeah i recognize it yeah i know i know Uh uh-huh uh-huh yeah i know Uh uh-huh uh-huh because we're getting bombarded by information unbelievably large gigantic amounts of information every single day and we have access to the whole world in our pocket right it's unbelievable so what you guys, if you look at Gary Kasparov, everybody knows that he used to be the, the greatest chess champion in the whole world. And now mm. his student, Magnus Carlsen, his protege, not a student, Magnus became Magnus by himself, and then he became Gary Kasparov's student. Now, you have to understand that when Gary Kasparov went through his process to become the great grand champion, the world champion in, in chess, he would literally have to go visit chess masters old chess masters up in the mountains and dig through their horrible earth floored cellars with spiders and creepy crawlies to find their old chess notes that's actually literally the truth and he would read their chess notes and try to pull out a gem right today 
every chess match that's been written down that you basically care about at all can be accessed on 300 different chess websites where you literally just put like Gary Kasparov up there and you can go click, 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 and you can literally click through all of his games. Imagine that. So Magnus Carlsen literally can write down on a piece of paper over 1,000 chess matches. That's impressive. I don't think Gary Kasparov could. Now, in when it has to do with quick moves and quick thinking, recognition-based consciousness and learning is very important. But how important is understanding and feeling as well? So, the issue is that we have so much information that we can't integrate that we often think we understand the world and ourselves based on quick clicks. So the fact that you're like, okay, I'm going to sit here five minutes and I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to meditate and then I'm done meditating. I've done that thing. Mm. You know, have you really confronted yourself? Mm. Have you gone deeply into yourself? Have you understood why you make decisions? And why you don't make decisions. Have you understood the, the responsibility you have for your own life. And why you continue to get the same results over and over and over. People whether they're good do or bad. Mm. We don't do it. Because we're recognition based clickers. And you're living so much in your head. It's insane. Like uh, when you have had patients we've been training. Mm -hmm. They've been having back pains. And then we kind of started to get them back into training. And they're, they're so much in their head and not feeling their body. They have no connection to the body anymore. No. Like, can't you... F okay, you have to understand you are... Deep down, you are a monkey. Mm. You have a big computer in the top, but you have so much more. You have to start to feel your body, that understand you have emotion. You have to start with that. And that was actually why I felt drawn more now towards this kind of work and not training. Because mm. I saw, you know, every patient, every client I had when I was a personal trainer, they met this blockage where I had to actually start working on their mental, emotional state to get them to do the things they needed to do with their body. Yes. And that was not my job because I was going to make them lift stuff. Mm, exactly. You know? But it, in a way, it becomes that job. And just so it's said that when Moritz says she's focusing on this stuff instead of working out doesn't mean she's not working out she's beef just 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 no, stay make, working so out because again you have idea. to have a body that yeah. is able and to respond. respond exactly but you know is yeah. it that important for me now to mm. for myself to lift 140 kilos no it doesn't because mm. i'm 60 kilos i don't have to lift 140 kilos that's nothing to do with my ability to respond yeah. but i would like to lift more than my body weight i would yeah, like absolutely. to be able to go for walks i would like yeah. to have a strong functional body because yes. i know i we're gonna have this body until i'm 80 90 100 who knows yeah, 120 in your case you're not yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing and i saw that in in people was training as well that you know you have to work out, but then their mental, emotional state, the the reasons why they're making decisions, their, their mm. yeah, like this, again, their decision making, their excuses, their escapism puts blockage for their development in training. Mm. Exactly. So they couldn't get a body that actually could respond because yes. their excuses, behavior stopped them, and then they have to start looking at that to actually get the result that they want and need. For yeah, the health. Exactly. You know, so... Um, I was uh, treating a nurse, actually. The, I thought the, what you're saying is exactly the case. You know, she came in, she was looking really exhausted. I'm like, you know, what's going on? And she said, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a nurse practitioner with a specialization in nutrition. I said, yeah, you're, you're, you're a nutritionist. It's amazing. You know, she said, yeah, but you know who I'm working with, right? And I'm like, no, what, what's who you're working with? And she says, I have all the patients that have had the... Um, gastric bypass surgeries mm. and i'm like oh that's a that's really interesting because when you you know cut down the stomach size and all that and you take out a piece of the duodenum you know their their diabetes type 2 disappears almost instantly i mean there's a lot of cool physiological changes there and she says 
that's the point. It's a physiological change, but it's not a mental, emotional change. Their and behavior doesn't change. Their do behavior right. doesn't change. They're just restricted for a while, and then they can almost all of them have very strong mental, emotional issues that were not worked out before the surgery, and that destroys the result of their surgery afterwards. And I'm like, well, that's the same thing with low back pain. You know, mm. you can cut a prolapse away, for example. But if you don't change the environment, if you don't take the pressure and even out the pressure over the discs, you will get that prolapse back. And then you operate again. And again, like 75% of people are just as bad or worse after operation as they were before going in, right? The whole, that is five year span after the operation, right? So when the nerves grow back and everything happens, you start using your back again because there's an imbalance there that was not biomechanically fixed. You get the same issue again. So it's about trying to deal with the underlying issue. Mm. The problem is, is that if you don't know there's an underlying issue. Exactly, <laughs> and right? that's yeah. the thing. And that's why it is very hard to start. Because yes. I say a lot, yeah, but people don't do their work. And they don't. But the problem why they don't do the work is they don't know that they have work to be done. Right. Because life is happening. It's chaos. And we're not aware of that you actually can do self-work. And if you do self-work, mm. you are... Uh, a hippie or yes. you take LSD or you are <laughs> very uh, I know because I that was what I thought mm, mm, talk mm. to me about spirituality three years ago like <laughs> take your yoga pants and walk away from me because mm. <laughs> talk to my face now talk to the hand because the face not listening yeah <laughs> right and now I'm like all into that but it has to do are you you have to first understand you have work to be done mm. and I had to start doing that yeah and understand it's your process and it has nothing to do with your kids or husband or workplace or having a Bentley or not having a Bentley. It's about you. Mm, exactly. And you can have a Bentley. Of course. And you can have a comfortable life. And you can still be absolutely positively tortured from the inside. Mm. Because like a curious and very clever monkey, you learn the mechanics of getting cash or getting things, but you don't learn anything about being you. And developing you or you develop you and you become you and you evolve and you have all of the clever monkey things in your life like money and cars and cash and stuff which i've gotten there's a mechanic to that to achieving and becoming somebody but my friend if you're somebody on the outside make sure you're becoming somebody on the inside that you love so i want to end off with thank you for joining us and remember you matter unless you multiply yourself by the speed of light squared and then your energy but if you can't be energy matter thank you for listening to our podcast we hope you felt we added something to your day and hopefully your life if you want to learn more Subscribe to our newsletter and find us at integrated-human.com. That is integrated-human.com. Integrated Human on YouTube and other social media platforms. Have a great day and thank you again for listening. Love, light and upgrade from us at the Integrated Human team.